Thank you. Your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for choosing to speak to us in an uncertain world where there is confusion, where there is lack of understanding of the things and seasons. We thank you that you can give us clarity. Thank you, Lord. You said that in your word, where there is no vision, the people perish. We look to you this evening that you will open the eyes of our understanding that those things that we cannot see of ourselves, your spirit will be pleased to reveal even this unto us. Lord, our tomorrows are in your hand. We don't know what the future holds, but as the songwriter says, we know who holds the hand. We just place ourselves into your care at this time. Open our hearts. Open our minds. Help us, Lord, to rebuke every opposing voice that we would hear and help us to focus on hearing your voice. We know that there are many voices but you said that my sheep hear my voice and a stranger's voice they will not follow. We just commit the fellowship into your hands at this time. We're asking you to bless our night speaker that whatsoever he would speak, he would speak as an oracle and that he would speak to your honour and to your glory. We thank you for the privilege of being able to hear your word. Many have not this privilege. Lord, they are left in darkness, left in ignorance, left groping in the dark. But we thank you for the entrance of your word, which giveth light. We commit each and every one of us into your hand, those that are sick, those that are afflicted, those that are in, oh God, various temptation. Your word declare manifold temptation. We're asking that you would send your word to heal. Send your word to bring deliverance. Send your word to bring consolation as we place ourselves into your care. Lord, bless our night service, we pray, as we commit all things into your hands, telling you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, Brother Patrick. Thank you for opening in prayer at this time. Brother L, congregation, congregation, Brother L, God bless you. God bless you, Sister Sandra, Overseer, Mother Edwards, Mother Dolly. Sister Navlet, Sister Datlin, Brother Campbell, Sister Catherine, Sister Dell, Sister Pam, Sister Shirley, Brother Pat, Brother Andrew, Sister Shirley, God bless you all tonight. Um, special greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and peace be unto you and grace be multiplied. Um, we give God thanks for his goodness. I want to especially give God thanks for this day. Um, yesterday I went to work and I wasn't feeling well since last week, but God's grace has been good. I took a COVID test at school yesterday and it was negative, but I knew that I didn't have it. I just knew that I had a bit of a flu. So with permission, I came home early, which gave me a better position than what I was last week where I was rushing on, trusting God to get on to teach, but I was able to not only have a rest and drink some chicken soup and all that kind of stuff today, but also I was able to look at the scriptures and pray and meditate about it, which my soul was in that in a good manner. May God richly bless you all tonight. Once again, I'm going to ask Sister Catherine to be reading for us. Um, I'd like to share it. Let me see if I can find. Um, let me see if I can find this PowerPoint. Did have it a while ago. It seems to have disappeared. One second. Uh, hold on. Share screen. Don't know where it's gone. Okay, hold on. Share. Uh, 
active. Right. Right. You all can't see the screen at the moment, can you? No. No. Okay. Hold no. On. Let me see. I don't know what happened just now. I've got some um, important things to go, go through tonight. Hold on. Let me minimize that. Go to screen scare. I seem to have everything else apart from the PowerPoint. All right, let me close it and reopen it. Do, 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 do. Excuse me, Bridget. It doesn't make much sense, but the Lord knows. Um, let's have a look. Right, let's open it again. Go to screen share. Right, here we are. Got it then. Right, you can see it now? Yes. Yeah. All right, God bless you. Thank you for your patience. Um, there is a verse of scripture that I've been meditating on. And there's a verse that Paul speaks about mastery. I know some of us don't believe in always in perfecting what we have. But Paul was a man who says, I count all things but loss. And he didn't stop to say about just making sacrifice he says i want to lose to gain he said i count all things but loss not for nothing and just leave it there but that i may gain that thing called the excellency of the knowledge of christ and um i want to give god thanks that when those of us who ch choose to sacrifice our life for god in return he indeed will bless us I'm going to ask Sister Catherine to, to, to be reading for us. But just before she does, this is the last week where we're looking at the weapons of our warfare. And funny enough, Brother Patrick put a notice up on the, on the church's WhatsApp group. And believe me, I had no idea that next week's lesson deals with the same things that. So I'd ask us all to um, listen carefully because things that you'll hear tonight will spill over into Sunday's lesson. And I'm not sure if his brother Pat or sister Pam will be teaching on, on Sunday. But we've been looking at the weapons of our warfare the first week, where we look at the purpose. And then we'll, we've been looking the last two weeks at the armor and the weapon. But tonight, we've looked at the weapon, we've looked at armor, and now we're going to look what we do with it all. We all should have on our weapon and our armor. And that is because we are about to, we are in. And we want to stay in that in the future, future, we can be part of the eternal army of heaven, which we would like to speak about tonight. Our main topic tonight is to do with the army of heaven. And I'm going to ask Sister Catherine if she would read Daniel chapter 10, verses 10 to 12 first, please. Set thine heart to understand. <laughs> Daniel 10, verses 10 to 12. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent, and when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Now, we know the angel was sent to Daniel. And if you look at the main theme on the top of this slide, it says, set that art to understand. And I'm praying tonight that God will bless all of you because whether it be Bible study, prayer meeting or church, if our hearts are set to understand, then God will grant us understanding. God will not give us understanding if our hearts are not set to understand 
You may not understand, but if you set your heart to understand, God will see that you want to understand and then give you understanding because you have a mind to understand. When Moses turned to side to see why the bush burned and was not consumed, he set his heart to find out why, then God gave him understanding. Now, Daniel was in prayer, and it was through prayer he was looking for understanding. And he, Daniel was a man greatly beloved, and the angel said to him, for unto thee am I now sent. Now, what Daniel did not understand, the angel of God understood it and was sent to explain it to Daniel. Now, I'd like to ask a question from verse 12. You can see a question mark there. I want to get you a bit interactive tonight to, so that you can understand greater. Because when you just sit and listen, it's like somebody either just teaching or talking or telling you what they know. But when you're involved, like Sister Captain read it, when you read it, it's different from when you're just listening. Then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day, can one of us as brethren tell us as brethren what the first day was or what is meant by the first day? Does anyone know? The first day of what? What is the first day? Okay, let me understand. Let's go back to last week. Hmm? Who was that? Was that Sandra? Yeah. What did you say? It's birth. No. Remember, the angel was in there for 21 days, okay. Sandra, yeah. which is equivalent to how many weeks? A month. Three. Three weeks. Three weeks. Right. So from the beginning of the three weeks, from the moment Daniel set his heart to understand. Yeah, look, it, Romero. Romero. Sorry. <laughs> this is I've got muted. Go right, right. Yeah. From the first day that Daniel set his heart to understand, according to verse 12, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself, before God, thy words were heard, and I am now come for thy words. So, can with that understanding, when was the angel sent to give Daniel the understanding? Oh my God, right. And he said to Daniel, a great beloved, I would say, <laughs> the first day of his fasting. Yes. Immediately, as Daniel said, right, I'm going to go and fast and pray to understand from immediately from that said same day he set himself and started the beginning of the 21 days day one the beginning of the first week the answer was sent from God but he's not going to get the answer until three weeks later or 21 days later mm. but the answer was sent brother Edley mm -hmm. from the very first day that he set his heart to understand. And that tells me that sometimes when you set yourself to know things about God, expect the devil to try and hinder you from getting that which you want to understand. It's like Sister Dattlin, there are things that we would want in our life and we pray about and we don't get it yet. And the devil speaks to us about we ain't getting it and God not answering our prayers. But sometimes the answer has been sent from the first day you ask, you ask for it, but somebody is hindering the messenger who has the answer <laughs> to your prayers. Come with me. I ask you to pray. As we go forward, can I ask us to set our hearts to understand? Don't just listen to the voice of Brother Earl. Set your heart to understand because there's some things that we need to understand that's affecting us today. It's affecting what's going on in, with Russia and Ukraine right now. And from the scriptures, we'll be able to understand what is going on with Ukraine and what is going on with Russia, even in 2021, 
in respect to when this was written back in Daniel days, so many thousand years ago, it's affecting because remember what the angel told Daniel, I'll show you the things that will short, surely come to pass. Sister Catherine. I return to fight. <coughs> Daniel 10 verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and 20 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me. Mm. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Daniel 10 verses 20 to 21. Then said he, knowest thou wherefore I am come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grisha shall come. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. Right. Can I ask for clarity? Who's actually speaking here? So that we understand, does anyone know who's speaking? All these words that we've just read, who spoke these words? The angel. The angel. Right. Okay. Let's look into what the angel says. Daniel didn't write these words. These words were spoken to Daniel by the angel. So the angel understood what was going on. Listen what he says. From the day you set yourself to understand, which was, we knew it was 21 days he was hindered. He said previously to this verse, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia. Does anyone know who the prince is? Who is it referring to? Teachers, overseer, Sister Pam, Brother Leroy. Satan. Who, who's the prince? Isn't it Satan, the devil? Okay. Is the devil a prince, brethren? Is the prince it by... of the carpet, yeah. Thank you. God bless you, Sister Pam. Even the devil, biblically, is called a prince, the prince, the prince of the power of the air. Now, along with him, along with him, he has princes in the bracket of principalities that rule in the realms of darkness with him. Now, the prince, if you are a prince, you must be part of what? A kingdom. God bless you, Sister Catherine. Get involved, Bridget. I don't want to just talk tonight. I want us to minister together. Because what the devil tried to do is to stop us from understanding. So the prince of the power of the here has princes with him that are not on God's side. And they're biblically now. One of them is now called the prince of the kingdom. Now, remember, we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness. So the prince of the kingdom of Persia. If this angel is referring to an angel, that means other than the prince, the natural man, who's the prince or king of Persia, which I'll come to in a minute. If unclean fallen angels take possession of a country, a nation, or a state and establish their rules from the powers of darkness or the kingdom of darkness in the kingdom. Let me explain. There's a kingdom of darkness where the angels that are fallen are, and then there's a kingdom of men. Now the kingdom of darkness can't be seen but they will try and manifest themselves in the kingdom of men. So the demonic forces that ain't, let me explain in the words, the fallen third will go and try to take control of kingdoms of this earth. So the prince of the kingdom of Persia, does anyone know 
not the devils now. Give me free of the kings of Persia. Free the rulers of Persia. Does anyone, can you, anyone know who they are? Cyrus. Cyrus. Darius. Darius. And there was another, I'll text you this, and there was also Belzeus, I believe he was, or what, what not. Um, no. Xerxes is, is, right. is Assyrian. Right. Now, these, the prince of the kingdom is not Cyrus. The Cyrus we heard the other day from Brother Pat Burnley was God's servant. And brethren, we need to understand that the king, the principalities that rule in darkness want to rule the state's kingdom, countries, nations of mankind. And if God is not governing these nations or these kingdoms, they are governed by the devil and his princes. So when, my, when Daniel was praying, God sent the answer by an angel to give him. And I want you to pay attention and understand it tonight. An angel of darkness, the prince of the kingdom of Persia, had more authority than the messenger that God sent to Daniel. Let me explain. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood yeah. the messenger of God. Is that right, Sister Catherine? Yes. yes. And the messenger of God, who's an angel, needed what? Help. Help, Help brother. Edley. God bless you all tonight. Come with me and pray with me and teach with me tonight. I don't want to teach on my own. If an angel needed help, how much more you and I? Because man is made a little lower than what? Angels. So we are yeah. less, angels are, have more power and authority than man. And yet this angel needed help. And guess who couldn't help the angel? Who couldn't help the angel? Who was the person that couldn't help the angel that had the message? Daniel. Mm. Daniel could not help the angel because there was a spiritual withstanding going on. you got to understand and I've got to understand in this warfare that we're in. That's why we need the whole arm and the weapons of our warfare. We need help in some of the things that we're fighting because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And if an angel of God need help from another angel, then you and I need help. The prince of the kingdom of Persia, which stood me one and 20, had them together 21 days. But then the angel turned around to David, Daniel and said, but lo, look, Michael, I love Michael. I keep telling you, I love that brother. <laughs> Then he tells you something about Michael other than being an archangel. Michael, one of the chief princes. Now, I've underlined that Michael is one of. In the spiritual realm, brethren, can I tell us from the Bible? I tell you and I show you because people question me when I teach. That's why I show the book so that when I give them the book, and they want to question me, they will question the book, not me, because the book speaks for itself. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot, not one titu. That's right, but Earl has been taught by God to show from the scriptures, opening a legend from the scripture that Jesus indeed is a Christ. Michael is just one off, Brother Pat, the chief princes. That means God has more than one chief prince. And Michael is only one off the chief princes. He's not just a, <laughs> an archangel, but he's a chief prince. Come to me, came to me to help, and I remain with the kings. Who's those kings? We just mentioned them a while ago. Cyrus. Yep. yep. Now, the kings of Persia were given over to God. And that's why Cyrus was called a servant of God. And he may decree that the temple should be rebuilt. I'm not going to go into that tonight. The building of the temple, the place of worship. If the devil opposes everything that God does, he would do everything in his power by Sambala and Tobiah to withstood to end the work. 
Do you know why the gospel outreach ministry is being hindered in the things that we do? Because we wrestle not against that which we see, the things which are temporal, but the things which are not seen. Our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. And we put on our armor and really get to get the armor. Do you know we can cause the devil a lot of problems if we understand who we are, what we are, who we belong to, and what we have? Then in verse 10, chapter 10, 21, 20, 21. Then he said, No, it's the way I'm come to thee. Now I will return to fight. Now hold on. After speaking to Daniel, the angel turned to him and says, I'm going back up where I was before I was sent to you because the fight is not over. Brethren, if angels fight the good fight, <laughs> then you and I are in a fight because angels in standing, two thirds of them are in a fight. <coughs> I will return and fight with the prince of Persia. Not, Ty not he wasn't gonna go and fight against Cyrus, but the demonic forces that want to work to recapture Persia so that they can have control over Persia. Who's controlling Russia? Prince. Who's controlling Russia? The Prince of Persia. Prince of, prince of Russia. Russia. Mm -hmm. Right. If you have the Prince of Persia, you can have a Prince of Russia. Mm -hmm. And brethren, if the Prince of Persia, if the, the ruler, the natural ruler of Russia is not subjected to God, that means he's under the rulership of one of the princes of the devil. And by the way, the of the one of the princes of the devil is called Behel's brother. <laughs> Behel's above, the prince of the devil. So the Bible clearly tells us that the devil has his princes. I wish I had time. Hmm. So he's going to go back to fight against the prince of worship. But listen, Persia, but listen what it says. And when I'm done, when I'm done, because I'm going to get a victory over him, because Cyrus is going to win. He said, but when I'm done with Persia, and Persia's now got to step aside to fulfill the prophecy of the, the, the four kings, the four beasts. Greece is coming. The angel said now, there's going to be another fight going on where the demonic force that ruled Greece, that got control over Alexander, are going to come up against the holy city. So we're not just looking at a natural army of men, guns and tanks. We're looking at the natural army and the spiritual army and how in the spiritual realm, the army of God is constantly at war with the army of the devil. The princes of God and the prince of the devil are always at war. What are they trying to do? The princes of God are trying to control a nation and the princes of the devil want control of a nation. So there's a constant war going on, not just a nation, but even from an individual to a family, to a community, there's a constant fight going on because it's not just a nation only. Listen carefully why Brother Hurl is doing this. Let me use the angel's word. I will show thee that which is noted in the scriptures of truth. Now, if the angel of God was going to open up what was in the scriptures to Daniel, can I ask you to pray for me as my brethren? Don't fight me. Don't oppose me. Don't compete with me. Pray for me that utterance may be given. Because unto you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. I don't try to sing like Sister Shirley because it's not given to me. But if it's given to me to understand the depths and the riches of knowledge, God, I will strive for mastery. And I need your prayers in order to achieve this. Listen carefully now. I will show you tonight, before I close, what's noted in the Bible, which is called the scriptures of truth. Hear what the angel said to Daniel before he left. I'm going to show you what's in the scriptures of truth that you read in the book of Jeremiah. And there is none that holdeth with me in any of these things which I'm showing you. It, the word, it means nobody don't understand the depths of what 
I'm explaining to you more than Michael. So Michael knew about what was going on to Israel that's contained in the scriptures more than the angel that was sent to Daniel. And the angel that was sent to Daniel says, I'm not afraid to tell you with all humility. What I've explained to you, I want to prophesy in parts, but Michael know more than me. <laughs> what a thing when you can look at your fellow brethren and in honor prefer one another. Preferring one another. The, the, the angel is picking up Michael. He know more than me. And listen what he says. There's nobody that don't understand more than me. But Michael, guess what? It's in bold. It's on the light. The angel told Daniel that God has given you a prince. Michael is not just one of the chief princes in the verse above, Sister Pam. According to the scripture, Michael is Daniel's prince. Now, what does it mean that he's Daniel's prince? <coughs> prince of Israel. He's the prince of Israel. Now, people talked about the prince of um, Israel, and they say it's Moses. But let me tell you biblically from that verse. You will never find no scriptures that speaks about Moses being the prince of Israel. But in the Bible, in the scriptures of truth, you'll find that Michael is their prince. Is your prince. Sister Catherine, please read for me. Let's have a look at Michael tonight. May God bless you all. Michael, Revelation 12, verses 7 to 9. And there was war in heaven. <coughs> Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. <laughs> and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now, brethren, who's the dragon? Who's the dragon? Devil. Satan. Satan. He, Satan is the dragon. The same person is the devil. The same person is Satan. And the same person is the old serpent. Mm -hmm. Now, where was World War I? World War I started in Austria no. on the, in the earth. I'm talking spiritually. Spiritually, World oh, War I was in heaven. Heaven. In heaven. <laughs> in heaven. In heaven. Yeah. In heaven. <laughs> Bro, Lee's right. Having mm -hmm. been a teacher, he knows that World War I started in Austria, you know, for one natural world war. But there was a war before that, and it took place in heaven. And then if you listen carefully, you'll see a question mark up there. War in heaven, not on earth. Michael and his angels. Can somebody explain to us as brethren his angels? Two-thirds of, of, two 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 of heaven that were cast out yeah. are Michael and his angels. Michael is chief cherub, and the cherubs are the, uh, the, 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 as it were, for lack of a better word, the soldiers of heaven. Okay. Michael, one of the chief, chief princes. princes. So not all angels are warriors. Were put under Michael. No. All of the chief princes were allocated a portion of the two thirds of heaven. Some hundred fold, some fifty fold. <laughs> Michael has been given a group of angels to be under his supreme command. And when there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon before he was cast out fought with Michael 
with his angels. Who's his angels? The, the, the third that was cast out. Right. The third of the angels that were cast out, those third were under the control or supervision of the devil before he was kicked out of heaven. And those who he won over, and I'm going to tell you how he won over a third. The great dragon, verse 9, was cast out. That old serpent called the devil, bam, the same person, the serpent is the devil, he's also Satan, which deceived the world. So deception started in heaven Amen. where the devil deceived, deceived a, third. a third of God's creatures in the heavenly realm that he can give them a better life and more authority if they help him to ascend oh. above the, the throne Almighty. of God. Now, you must remember his deception because deception is going to be the first thing he used to get man to commit sin. So he came out of heaven as a deceiver and went straight into her to deceive. The woman being in transgression was deceived. Adam was not deceived. He deceived Eve, according to the New Testament. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Right, so the third of heaven angels are now in the earth. The other two thirds are in heaven. And some of those are appointed to Michael and others to the other chief princes. Read for me, please, this chapter. Let's say what Jesus says about it. Legions of angels, Matthew 26, verse 53. <coughs> Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? <laughs> Read this again. Legion, a regiment of the Roman army, the number of men composing which differed at different times. It originally consisted of 3,000 men, but in the time of Christ consisted of 6,000, exclusive of horsemen who were in number a tenth of the footmen. The word is used in Matthew 26, verse 53, and Mark 5, verse 9, to express simply a great multitude. Sister Shirley, listen to the words of your master. Yes. Thinkest thou that I cannot pray? What, you think I can't pray? Brother Pat, keep leading prayer meeting, yeah? There's power in the prayer. Let me tell you, Brother Pat, let me tell you something. Do you know that through prayer, you can call angels? According to Jesus, he give us the key. He said, thinkest thou not that I cannot pray? And then he says, tell you to who? You, know, you think I can't pray to the Father? And he shall, and I've highlighted it, presently do what? Not give me 12. Oh. But Jesus knew, Virgin, Sister Del, I wish Sister Joy was here. <laughs> do you know that prayer can keep, through prayer, you can ask for more than 12,000, 12 legions of angels to come and help you. Ask <laughs> what you will and it shall be given. <laughs> we need to really get into the upper room. Because in the upper room, you can come boldly to find help in the time of need. And I only need one angel, because once you chase a thousand, you think it's me? You think it's you? 
you can't run a fast one. But an angel can chase a thousand. And two angels can put 10,000 to flight. I'm not saying we can't do it. But listen, <laughs> prayer, Bridget, prayer, 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 prayer. And if we stop preaching, and we don't preach in church no more, that's fine. And Brother Hurl stop teaching, that's fine. But I'll tell you this to us as a church, never, on no account, do you stop praying. Prophesying positions in church from overseership down to doorkeeper will cease. But the Bible says pray without ceasing. No position in church should be above our prayer life. I wish somebody would say. <laughs> Amen. 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 Sister Gabriel, read for me, please. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Sister Gabriel, please read. An unclean spirit. Mark 5, verses 2 to 5. Hmm. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him no not with chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Now, not tonight, but another day we'll teach on being possessed and the strength it can give you. And we'll talk about being anointed and the strength it gives you. Because by the anointing, you can run, leave a troop and leap over walls. <laughs> Ask the prophet. But I'm not going to do it too much. But can somebody explain from what we've looked at so far, another term for an unclean spirit before we go on? Demon. A demon, another term for unclean spirit, from where we're coming from in our teaching tonight. Prince, legion. Right. An angel that is cast out. An unclean spirit is still an angel. I need us to remember that because we Angels tend to, have lost their first estate. Right, because we tend to forget that when we speak about unclean spirit, we're talking about an angel fallen. Now, quickly, I've got a question mark next to stone. What do you use stones to make that you can cut yourself with? You can make use stone to make spears and stones. Weapons. Right, anybody else apart from me? What can you use? What is what can you take stone and make? that you can cut yourself with? You call flint. Flint, yeah. But well, what have you got in your kitchen that's made out of stone? Knives. Thank you, brother Andrew. Swords. Swords. So those who take knives and razor blade that's made mm. from stone, Sister Catherine, you get it now, and cut themselves, it's calling modern day term self harming. Self mutilation. You can't tell people that it's an unclean spirit no. that's making you take a knife and cut your wrist, a razor blade, and cutting your wrist. But there's a force behind them that's causing them to do it. Sister Catherine, read for me. Please. My name is Legion. Mark 5, verses 7 to 9. And cried with a loud voice and said, What <coughs> have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God, 
that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, come hmm. out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Brethren, previous verses, since Catherine read, how much constitute in the Roman army, a legion is between how many troops? 6,000 men. I'm gonna ask Lee to give the brethren a chance. <laughs> what it is it? I'm gonna ask the ministers to forbear, forbear unless I ask them to speak, because I need the brethren to understand. And um, it's, it's nothing rude. I'll, I'll ask you a time, when there's a question to ask, I'll ask you. But give the brethren a chance so that they understand him, because we minister for the edifying, the building up. And if we jump in ahead of them, we stop them from understanding, though we, we're helping them. So let me ask, all right, let me ask Lee a question, right? Lee, this question is for Ella Thompson, right? Why is his name Legion? Because he's many. Oh, you, hold on, hold on. You're doing exactly what. <laughs> 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 you see me? You see me? You see me? When I, when I ask Lee a question, the virgin. <laughs> there are many. Many. Right, Sister Nablet, why is his name Legion? Because we are many. He gave the answer for we are many. And that's right, Sister Nablet. But Lee, what are the reasons why he says, my name is Legion. Because before he said we, he addressed himself first. He says, my name is Legion. Where did he get Legion from? Yeah, he's, he's, he's more than demons don't just fight on their own. They fight together. And they're okay. more than one. Right. So There's two. They, they fight as a company. They fight as an army. All right, I'm coming to that. Well, let me explain Legion. Legion. They know legion or ranks or quantities. They learned it in heaven because he made them captains over 10, over 50, over 100, mm -hmm. and over 1,000. The yes. demons that were cast out understood ranks from how, God, for how, from how God structured heaven. Does God make the reason why he said legion because he's part of at least a thousand, at least three to six thousand, and he made two answers to one question. The first answer he answered for himself my individual name is legion, so he was speaking for himself, but then he explained in a broader sense. My name is Legion. Why is your name Legion? For we. Mm. So listen carefully now. It's an unclean spirit. But there was more than one devils that formulate an unclean spirit. Now look, brethren, at the unity of the fallen angels. Amen that they can operate in such a union that legion, many fallen angels can find rest in one man's body. And they weren't arguing and quarreling and showing off and competing and trying to outpray or outpreach one another they lived in the unity of the unclean fallen spirits. I have himself. never heard Jesus said, if Satan is divided, they get himself. Mm -hmm. There is more division in Christianity with people who have the Holy Ghost than we in the unclean spirit that possess people. There were seven sons. And they jump on one, one, and they jump, they exorcist, and one man jump on seven men and whoop them because they were pretending, pretending mm -hmm. to be like the Apostle Paul. Listen to what the spirits in the one man said. 
Paul I know. <laughs> Jesus mm. I know. You don't play with those two. But you ain't in nothing. <laughs> Demons know who you are. That's why when you go in the prayer room, brethren, don't play, play, don't play church. And especially when you're now caused to understand things pertain to his kingdom, because he's going to attack me for cause you need to understand. Because he attacked this, the angel to, who was sent to cause Daniel to understand. And he will attack Daniel for understand. He will attack you. He will attack the gospel outreach ministry because of the understanding we have. And if you ever want to know one of the reasons why we have so much problem as a fellowship is because we understand too much. But guess what? <laughs> There's another side to this, and I'm coming to it. <laughs> I'm not that. All right, listen carefully now. Let's say what Jesus said about this now, as we talk about the weapons of our warfare and our army. Please read for Mrs. Gatton. A strong man armed. Luke 11, verses 21 to 22. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, mm. he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divideth his spoils. When a, man's, when a strong man armed, brethren, we taught this and we teach it and we will teach it. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of might. We're not teaching you to be weak. We're teaching you. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Now listen, when a strong man armed, which means he's got his armor and his weapon, and the purpose of having your armor and your weapon is to keep his palace or keep his dwelling place. And if you keep your dwelling place, his goods are in peace. So I lie down in myself, right? And one devil want to come and start to attack me. The only way he can beat me is verse 22. When a stronger than he shall come upon him. So the devil knows who's to send to you. He's not going to send to you a demon or a situation that he knows that you would whoop or you beat. Brother Andrew, he will put a situation that he knows that will beat you up. And the reason why some of us don't get beat up, because guess what? Because when the enemy <laughs> come in like a flood and attack your mind, Sister Cynthia, and start telling all kind of things, the Holy Ghost in you rise up and say, all right, you Amen. are strong. Uh -huh. You are strong, Sister Cynthia, but I'm Amen. stronger than you. And if I don't help you, the devil will whoop you. You know, you know what I mean? let me talk to you. You know how many times over the years the devil tried to knock you down, for, knock you for six. And every time he tried to knock you down, for some strength, you'll find the strength to get up. I'm not moving because the spirit Amen. of God in you lift a standard. Because it's not by might. <laughs> it's not Amen. by power. And he that keepeth Israel don't slumber. Or sleep. or sleep mm -hmm. and he's the lifter up of your head so you continue to trust him as we teach you where you can't trace him but when a stronger than shall come upon him and overcome him he take away his armor you know what the weapons are war warfare brother claude if the devil can take away our helmet our shield of faith our breastplate of righteousness our girdle of truth and especially take off the shoes of our feet and take away our shield of faith we're going to lose our joy we're going to lose all the fruits of the spirit but thank god we're part of a army and in the army there are stronger members of the army that we're part of and ourselves in the same sense listen let me let me read it so you can understand right i just want to show you that the difference in strength let the weak stand strong. Those who are strong must made of home to the weak. So you're growing in grace and your strength may not be the same as the others. And those who are strong must be strong. So Brother Earth should be telling you, if he's strong, that you need to get stronger. Come up, press towards the mark 
of the eye calling, don't stay in the lower plains. Flee to the mountain. Sister Catherine, read for me, otherwise I'll just carry on all night. <laughs> Please read. Seven other spirits. St. <coughs> Luke 11, verses 24 to 26. Hmm. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and finding none, he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept, <coughs> garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Mm. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. The unclean spirit. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, now I, I would like us to note the word man, because it's going to switch from a man to something else in a minute. He walketh through dry places. Who goes and walking dry places, Bertrand? Does anyone know? Who's the he that walketh through dry places? I just make sure you understand. Devil. 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 So the unclean spirit is cast out of the man, and that unclean spirit, not the man, that unclean spirit goes and starts walking up and down through dry places. What's he looking for, according to that verse? Rest. Rest. So unclean spirits are looking for somewhere to rest. That's why God asked the devil, what when thou comest thou? Hear him. From walking to and fro. Devils are supposed to walk to and fro. They're not supposed to have rest in us. Don't give no place to the adversary. Don't make him... I thought, rest in your head, resist the devil. It's coming up in the next Sunday school lesson and he will flee. Don't entertain the thoughts. Mind what you think about. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart <laughs> be acceptable in our sight. Because the unclean spirit that is out in the world, walking up and down, is looking for Putin. And when he finds Putin, yes. he's going to say to Putin, those people over there are not troubling you, but I want you to go and trouble them. Take your army over there and teeth their land. You don't need nothing, but just go and go and see. I want to kill someone and I can't do it on my own. So I need you to go across the borders and kill them. What does Putin need? What does Russia need? Nothing. So why are you invading someone's land? There's a prince of the power here. The prince of Russia is at work. He seek it rest. This is what it says. I will turn to my house. So it's now not called the man. It's called a house. So whether it be a man physically or a house physically, unclean spirits, Bridget, listen carefully now, can dwell in a house of flesh or unclean spirits can dwell in a man's body. They are not designed to go in there. And I'll teach you this before and I'll tell you again. No angel of God will possess or fill a man. There's only one spirit that has got the permission from God to fill a man, and that is the Holy Ghost. No angels of God will possess a man. But unclean spirits will possess a man and make him live in the tomb and cut himself with knives. But listen carefully. When he cometh back to the house, he finally swept and garnished. Ella Thompson, there's a question for you, young man. What does it mean, swept and garnished? It, 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 it means that the man is cleaned up, ready for the occupation of the Holy Ghost. Given right. If he permits the Holy Ghost to come in, the Holy yeah. Ghost will go in. Right, and, and when, when did he get clean up, Lee? He got clean up when he was when his, his spirit was cleaned up by the blood of Christ. And when did he get clean up? When After what happened? Left. When the unclean spirit, clean spirit left. left. So, what do you learn about unclean spirit? They're like clean what? They're like clean dwelling. So, when we teach sanctification in church and we are sanctified, 
Expect devils to come because the light places that are clean. Then the <laughs> devils don't like dirty places. Devils like sanctified people. <laughs> they like clean house. Why? When they go in there, they have a job to mess up. <laughs> garnished. The house is garnished. The, the house is garnished. If I put a V, take off the word G and put V, it says varnish. <laughs> You clean your house and you polish the floor and the place immaculately clean. The gospel outreach ministry come down to a handful of people and we're having peace. And all of a sudden the devil come in and say, no, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, peaceful, no, no preaching the word of God. Amen. No. And, 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 and use that rest. If, if I allow you, the next thing we do, God's going to start bless the church. I'm go, I need to find somebody I can stir up to cause trouble in the church. Amen. Because you all are too <laughs> sanctified. <laughs> And be careful of the spirit when you feel like you are, we're such at peace with ourselves that we can get up and just do what we want. No, 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 no. If we keep the place clean, the devils won't stay. If the devils stay, they're going to mess it up. That's right. According to the scripture. When he cometh, he then goeth, Brother Campbell. And listen, Brother Cam, listen what to this devil. You think devils are stupid? Mm -hmm. They got kicked out one time. You think he's just going to come back and get kicked out twice? Mm -hmm. Then he goeth and he got to his friend. The, he he take us unto him. Not one. Unity strengths. You, Ranks. You don't call we people, don't call we people to help you. Amen. <laughs> he oh. finds seven other spirits. Yeah. Seven. And they're not just spirit, but those seven other spirits are what? More wicked yes. than himself. Do you know if you let people come back into the church or not given over to God after they <laughs> leave, they're not coming on their own? Say it again, Grant. <laughs> if we let people come back into the church, after they leave and they don't give themselves over to God. And I quote, they don't give themselves over to God. They'll bring people with them that are seven times worse than themselves. Say it again. Amen. And the last day of the house or the man will be worse than the first. Let me leave that and move on because I, I've got to finish at a certain time. Sister Catherine, read him, please. An angel of light, 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 to 15. <coughs> For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Walter the inhabitants of the earth, especially the church people and Israel. Why? False apostles, deceitful workers, those who say they're the apostle of Christ. Listen, Satan himself gets smart and what says, I am. I need to get into the temple. I need to get into the place of worship. I can't just walk up and down the earth. I need to go into a building. I need to find a house that's saved, where people are saved. I need to go into this church group and mess them up. So the devil transformed himself into a minister of the church. Wow. That's, that's why Timothy said in the last days, they have doctrines of devils because the devil is inside the church teaching church doctrine. Now, if the devil transforms himself into an angel of light, therefore, it is no great thing, Sister Nablet, listen now, if his ministers, Michael and his angels, the devil and his angels, the Satan and his ministers, the devil has ministers that are sold out for him. And I, wanna, um, I want to say this. 
And God bless our overseer, Byfield overseer Edwards and our deacon mothers. And I, I hear Brother Paul, and I'm, it's, not, I'm, it's not a rebuke, I just want to establish something here. Be careful when you say Brother Earl is the assistant overseer, because if he's the assistant, it means that you need to follow him. Don't talk to me about over sister or overseer of no church. And when he points you to the scriptures, you don't agree with it. If, if it's going to be a lead, if it is led that this brother is going to take over the church of overseer die, then you need, to, you need to follow the person that has the vision. And if you have no vision set out for the church and Brother Hurl sets a vision on the table, don't overturn it. Be a vision helper. I don't receive the title of man as no big deal because you know what? A title means nothing to your brother here. I'd rather be a brother in the church and go to prayer meeting than be hang up on a title about I'm an overseer of the church. Yes, yeah, so what? By reason of debt, I will not suffer to continue and I'm going to die one day. Then who's going to take over if the Lord tarry lies fear? Big deal. The office is nothing. The worship of God and the serving in sincerity is above all. <laughs> the devil and his ministers transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. That means, Brother Andrew, throughout Christianity, whether we be orthodox or whatever we call ourselves, I would say there's a lot of ministers in Christianity are devils incarnate. <laughs> and if you, you don't, this is what I'm saying, don't agree with me. The scriptures that you're reading tell us right now that Therefore, it's a no great thing if his ministers be transformed as ministers of righteousness. And where are you going to find them? In the church. Scripture of truth. Yes, sir. Amen. According to the scripture of truth. So, brethren, try brother Earl. Don't listen to everything himself. Try him. But if you find out he thinks he's saying, according to the scripture of truth, then hear ye the word of the Lord. Sister Catherine, if you can read on for us, please. Let me just switch it over to the good side before I close. His ministers. <coughs> Hebrews 1 verse 7 and of the angels he saith who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire Hebrews 1 verses 13 to 14 but to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation? Now, we're speaking about God here. And of the angels, he said, who make it his angel spirits. So his angels are spirits, and you understand that. And his ministers, who are the same angels, if we want to interpret that, if we want to interpret as being what us as preachers on the earth, that means we're saying the preachers on earth are like flames of fire. Well, if it means us, it means when we talk and say what God says, it's going to burn. But let, let's take us out of it and say his ministers are his angels. They're flames of fire. Now, he didn't say any to one of the angels. We don't get confused with worshipping angels. We don't worship them. We worship with them. Let me say it again. We don't worship angels. We worship with them. Amen. I'm going to say it one more time for the record. We don't worship angels. We never worship angels because the angel will rebuke you. Fellow God. servants. Yes, Brother Lee. God bless you. If you worship a true angel who is a fellow servant, he will send you. Stand up on your feet. Worship God. But anyone who has, if you entertain any kind of self-praise, be careful. Any kind of self-exaltation, be careful. Because unto whom does all praise belong to? God unto whom glory. does all glory belong to? Oh. Unto whom does all honor, majesty, dominion, and power belong to? You know, and I know, and forever thy word is settled. In the heavens. Let me go to verse 14 concerning the angels. Are they not all ministering spirits? The 10 times 10 times 10 times tens of thousands of angels. The scriptures tell us who they are. One, they are ministering spirit. And I want you to note it in the diary of your heart. Angels are God's ministering spirits. 
two is angels are sent to do what? To minister to who? To them. Who's them? Who are, who shall be his? The elect. Of salvation. Um, Not just the elect, but it says to them who shall be his of salvation. Can I ask you a question tonight? Are you a hero of salvation? Hallelujah. Bridget, Sister Cynthia, Sister Datley, Sister Catherine, Sister Cynthia, Mother Edwards, Sister Sandra, Sister Pamela, Sister Shirley. I'm going to leave it to sisters. Are you a hero of salvation? Yes. Well, according to that, promise. according to that, his ministering spirits are sent forth to minister for them who you who shall be heirs of salvation. So yes. if you are an heir of salvation, Sister Catherine, you should have angels ministering unto you. Let me explain. When he was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights and rebuked the devil, refused to turn stone into bread, refused to jump and commit suicide, let me whisper it to you. The Bible says the angels came and ministered, and ministered to him, ministered unto him, and he was born of the spirit from above. But it does mean that they can't minister unto him. Sister Catherine, I need to close. Read for me, please. Cherubim. Genesis 3, verses 23 to 24. <laughs> mm -hmm. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Yes. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, who's the tree of life? To us. Jesus. Right. And where is he? Heaven. And where else is he? In us. He's in, a, he's in us. Right. So if we have Christ in us, the hope of glory, we have this treasure. That means we should have some protection. Because what God did, listen carefully, Brother Pat. He drove out Adam. And then he placed at the east of Eden, cherubim, to do what? Oh, before I get to that. And not just cherub, but the cherub have a flaming sword. So who's, so the cherub is a soldier. Yes. <laughs> and not only is a soldier, but soldiers must serve and protect like the police and the soldiers in the army. When you join the army, your job is to serve and to protect. So this cherub and a flaming sword, which turn every way, is for what reason? To keep, that's the important word, to keep. And David picks it up and says, he shall give his angel charge over you. For what reason? To keep. I, I got a short time. If I do go over our past, Bridget, please bear with me down because I need to finish it for your sake and for your education. I'll, I'll try to be as quick as I can. Sister Catherine. The ass saw the angel, Numbers 22, verses 24 to 26. But the angel oh, 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 of the. Sorry, sorry, Sister Catherine. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I do apologize, ma'am. Please forgive me, Sister Catherine. Hmm? How many of us have seen an angel? Hands up, I haven't. Do you know, before I let this Catherine, that ass is more sanctified than me? <laughs> let me say it again. Balaam's ass was more sanctified. He didn't preach sanctification. He lived it. And because he lived it, not just preach it, he saw the angel. Sanctified people, guess what they are led to see? So I need to step up my sanctification because if I ask and see an angel, what's my problem? Read for me, please, Sister Catherine. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being <coughs> on this side and a wall on that side. Mm -hmm. 
And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself onto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. Now, I missed out the previous verse before, but I'm not going to go back to it because of time. But this, this verse is sufficient. The angel of the Lord was seen by a mule. Brethren, pray for me, and please pray for me. I haven't attained to the stage yet where I've gone beyond just knowledge. The jackass went further than me. I know they're here. I believe they're here. I believe they're giving charge of me, but I haven't seen them. But the ass, God touches eyes that he can see what Balaam, the prophet, could not see. Let me read for me, Sister Catherine. Let me just try and rush through this. Forgive me if I rush, but I need, I need, I need, I need to get to another scripture before I close. Please read. Numbers 22, verses 27 to 28. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell under... She fell down under Balaam and Balaam's anger was kindled and he smote the ass with a staff. <laughs> and the Lord opened the mouth of the ass and she said unto Balaam, what have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? Three times. You can read the rest of the scripture for yourself. Numbers, very good scripture to read. The ass saw the angel. He saw him and stopped. And then he moved out of the way. And then when he moved out of the way, the angel moved and stood in a narrow. So he couldn't go nowhere. So that said, you know what? I'm not moving. So he dropped and fell on Balaam. And Balaam's there beating the, beating the ass while the ass is seeing the angel. Or let me call, let me change the angel. The soldiers of God, one of the soldiers. Because you know what? Like the cherub brother Pat, he had his sword drawn. So you see this armor where we're supposed to have the sword of the spirit. Guess what angels carry? Those who are part of the army of God. They have a sword that man can't see, but a donkey that is sanctified. Let me say it again. Donkey that is sanctified. He's so sanctified. <laughs> that the Lord opened his mouth. <laughs> He's so sanctified that the Lord opened his mouth and he started to talk to me. And I'm, I suppose you got the road tomorrow and a dog start instead of barking at you, start talking to you. I bet you run. <laughs> what time? <laughs> now, sometimes I wonder, do we really believe some of the things that we read or do we just take it just as a, as a story i just happen to believe it and if i'm going to be classed as mad be clever beaver I, I spoke to the prophet well I, i'll rather be bad than believe the scriptures the ass turned to him and said in the tongue of men so the the ass started to speak in tongue of men he wasn't e or <laughs> <laughs> let god be true and every man alive he didn't say e or e or and Balaam never under. He said, Balaam, Balaam. Why, Balaam, why are you beating me? <laughs> why are you beating me? <laughs> and husbands, please don't beat your wives. <laughs> Let me leave that alone because some of us are in trouble already. Please read for me, Sister Catherine. I'll need to close. <laughs> brought back smiling. <laughs> please read for me, Sister Catherine. There stood a man, Joshua 5 and verse 13. And it came to pass. When Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him 
with his sword drawn in his hand. Mm -hmm. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? With permission, a man, only with permission, can a man see one of the soldiers mm. of the army of heaven. The donkey was given permission by God. Yes. Daniel was given permission by God. I'm not fighting myself to see them. If it please the Lord, this yeah. we will do if God permit. I'm not killing off myself saying, I want to see an angel. No, you know what? Like, I don't need to see them. But if it please God, and just like Daniel, Joshua was a sanctified ruler. And mm. he saw a man standing over against him. He was there, but he didn't see him all the time. Because remember, Michael, your prince. And under Michael, he has his army, captains over thousands. All Michael has to do, if he don't go himself, under instruction from God, is send one of his captains over thousand to go and speak to Joshua. Because anyone that relates to Israel is under the jurisdiction of the prince of Israel, brother Michael. Hallelujah. Amen. Read for me, please, Sister Catherine. The captain, <coughs> Joshua 5, verses 14 to 15. Hmm. And he said, nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. Can I and Joshua ask, did so. Can I ask us, brethren, to, to please forgive me tonight and give me another few minutes. I've got about three or four more slides. I just want to finish it. But can I ask, with that first bit permission, with all the humility of heart and spirit and mind and soul, can I ask that, can we take off our own shoes of our feet and put on the gospel of peace? Ooh. Let me ask okay. us, take off our shoes, how we see things, how we look at things. As the heaven is higher than the earth, God's ways is above our ways. And I'm asking you to do so because in the next few verses, we can't look at these things with our own shoes. We need to have on the gospel, the preparation so I'm preparing us that we can, I want to show you the verse of scripture that's, that's has it in it that speaks about the army of heaven. So that you're not thinking that I'm making it up. There is a verse in the Bible that says the army of heaven. Now come with me, please. <coughs> please read for me. Sister Catherine. Horses and chariots of fire. 2 Kings 6, verses 15 to 17. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be Hallelujah. with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. How did this happen? Brother Pat, prayer meeting. The man, the young man was panicking and Elisha went into prayer meeting. What is it about prayer meeting, Brother Pat? Elisha prayed when 
the literal army of the Syrians, chariots were around them. The young man was panicking and he prayed. But before he prayed, he told the young man, fear not. Brethren, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Don't worry about Russia. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. Don't worry about pressing no nuclear bomb. This world is reserved for God destroying. No nuclear bomb will destroy the earth. Other means the Bible's lying. God has reserved this earth for fire and no man is going to destroy it. The scriptures cannot be wrong. So let not your heart be troubled. They're just playing Dolly House and Tonka Toys. That's all they're doing. If, if, if Putin thinks he's bad, make him press a button and see what the rest of the world do to him. Seriously, he's not one of the four kings that conquered the earth, so he will never do it. He's just playing games. I understand that from the scriptures of truth, and I'm not worried about him. He will never rule the world. Amen. If God want to, God can send a watcher to him and say to him, meanie, meanie, like he did in Nebuchadnezzar, and chop him down. This night, if God saw you, remember what the Lord said to him, thou fool, this night thy soul is quiet. He's there trying to possess the earth which belongs to who? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And he can't be content because there's a spirit of force of the prince of Russia, the demonic force of darkness trying to drive him. He don't even understand that God, his breath is in the hands of God. And let me tell you something, what's the point you fighting for all the material things you can get and teeth in other people's land and wealth and country only to, even if you get it, what are you gonna do? You're gonna die and leave it. How yeah. foolish in all you're getting, get wisdom, get knowledge, get understanding, get some praise and give it to God. Spend your, that's the whole duty of man. Amen. Bless the Lord. Take everything I have but you will not take my praise. You will not take my worship. Amen. You will not take my thanksgiving. You will not take my honor to whom I will give it. Thank I will bless Jesus. the Lord at all time. At His time, praise. praise because I came into this world with nothing but nothing. the fact. And I'm going to leave, but I'm going to leave with worship. Yes. I'm not leaving with nothing. I'm going to leave with his praise. Amen. Seriously. Elisha prayed. And my prayer to you tonight, all brethren, that the Lord, just like Elisha, may God open up our eyes that we can understand who's in our room with us. That we can understand who's in our kitchen. That we can understand who's in our bathroom and our sitting room and our bedroom. That we can understand who's with us when we get in the car that we can understand who's with us when we go to work, that we can understand that when you get to church, Brother Pat, and I come, you don't come alone. So I'm bringing somebody with me because they come with, everywhere I go, they come with me. Elisha prayed, <laughs> Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And when the young man looked, behold the mountains, were full of horses and chariots of fire. But here's a close I like. Where were they? Round about. Round about the preacher. What a way to preach, Brother Pat. Knowing that round about you, whilst you're preaching, you're doing the will of God. Round about you. There's horses and chariots of fire, which I can't even go into tonight because it's not just horses but there's chariots of fire do we know what's around us this i do know that the angel of the lord encampered round about round about them that fear him here's the verse i want to give you tonight to show you that it speaks about the army of heaven please read for me sister Catherine. the army of heaven daniel 4 verse 35 and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him what doest thou we haven't begun to look into this thing yet. This is just like a little foundation. He will, his, he will do it according to his will in the army. I'm closing. I'm only got one more slide out this, I promise you. The army of heaven. Now, if you are a soldier and a good soldier, 
and you're fighting the good fight of faith, Britain, as I close this session, and you have on your armor, and you have your weapons of your warfare, that means you and I are not just part of whilst we're here temporally in our body, but we're preparing ourselves to join the first army, which is the army of heaven. And let me close by introducing you or reminding you of a young preacher who was teaching this lesson that I've taught for the last four weeks. He taught it so many years ago. And if he was here, I would sit back and say to him, Brother Enoch, come and tell the Gospel Outreach Ministry about the army of heaven. Listen what he says as I close. This is my last scripture for you tonight, brother. Please, Sister Catherine, read for me. 10,000 of his saints. Hmm. Jude 1, verses <coughs> 14 to 15. And Enoch also, hmm. the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon mm. all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Enoch. Our brother, the seven from Adam, was teaching this lesson that I'm teaching because there's nothing new under the heavens. He prophesied or forewarned or declared to those who would listen. He said, look, I can see the Lord coming. And he's not coming alone. He's coming with his army. <laughs> and in his army, there's tens thousands, 10, what well, utterance, 10,000, that means you, they're numberless, of his saints. And what are they coming to do? They're coming to execute judgment and to convince. Even if we try now to tell people and they don't want to listen, let's just do our duty. But well, one of these days, they will be convinced of their ungodly deeds. And some of us have to put away some hard speeches where ungodly sinners say things to us, you know, pardon me, they stick up their fingers and they tell you a few letter words and they tell you don't want to hear nothing about this God and all sorts of things. A man told me certain things one time and I had to dust the foot of the dust the shoes, the dust off my feet. And I won't even tell you what happened to him. But let me tell you this. We're in training to join the army of heaven. So fight the good fight of faith and lay hold. And I said, I said to the government that Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. And henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of life, which I will exchange this helmet of salvation one day. And I will not just exchange the salvation, but I'll leave this army that is on earth with my fellow brethren on earth. And I'll join the eternal army of heaven. What a wonderful thing to look forward to. May God bless you and may God keep you. May you lift up. Thank you for your extra minutes you give me as I hand back to Sister Sandra in Jesus' name. God bless you all. God bless you, Brother Earl. God bless you. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We have Come to the end of our teaching today. Brother Earl stated in part of his teaching that we should note in the diary of our hearts these lessons. God bless you. At this time, I'm going to ask Brother Edley if you can pray the closing prayer. Sister Charmaine, is she there? Okay. So after Sister Charmaine gives the announcements, Brother Edley, if you could just pray for Brother Earl because this was his last. Um, week of teaching and for the brethren that have to go away to ponder on these words. Thank you, Sister Charmaine. 
God bless you, brethren. God bless you. Bless you. Sunday, our service starts at 1.30 and finishes at 4 p.m. Our topic this week is victory in Jesus. And our scriptures are taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 to 6. Also Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 to 15. God bless you. God bless you, brethren. God bless you, Sister Charmaine. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Brother Headley, are you there? Bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Father, when we come before you, once again, we give you thanks, Lord in heaven, for, oh God in heaven, your wonderful words that have come to our hearts, Lord, to encourage us, almighty Father in heaven, to continue on this journey. Thank you, Lord, for your manservant whom you have helped in such a way, Lord, to deliver your words that, oh God, you have given unto him, Lord, teach us tonight, and Lord, we thank you. Thank you for him. We pray that, Lord, you'll continue, almighty God in heaven, to bless him and to continue, Lord, to fill him up, Lord, with your words. We pray that, Lord, you will continue to be with us and to strengthen us, your people, Lord, whom you have called from sin. Mm -hmm. We thank you that, Lord, you have touched us. You have given us this wonderful hope. Mighty Father, we have in thee. And therefore, Lord, tonight we worship you. And Lord, we magnify your precious name for your words. Oh, God in heaven, we honor you tonight. Pray that you will continue to help us, that Lord, we will fight the good fight of faith. And continue, Lord, to hold on to this wonderful salvation that, Lord, you are blessed us. We pray for your strength tonight and for your keeping power. We pray that, Lord, you'll continue to bless and to keep each and every one of your people and help us, Lord, that we'll continue to look to you, almighty Father, because thou art our strength. Take full control, O oh God, and continue to bless us, Lord, your people. And give us the strength, Lord, to continue to look to you because thou art our help. Bless us, we pray. Was the victory continue in Jesus' name? Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you once again, Brother Eddie. Thank you, Brother Patrick, for opening in prayer. Brother Earl, thank you for your diligence the last four weeks. Wonderful teaching. Uh, Sister Catherine, for your reading and support in the teacher. Brother Edley, for your closing prayer. Sister Charmaine, for your announcements. God bless you, brethren. Can we all pronounce a benediction? And I'm in the case of our heart. Oh, Lord, our strength. Good night, brother. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Sleep well, sweet dreams. Peace be with you. Bless you, brother. 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 Bless you, everybody. Bless you, bless you. Bless you, all. Bless you. Bless you, Mr. Dali. Bless you, Mr. Bless you all.